Hey Kilted Warrior here, hope you're having a great day. Remember to subscribe if you enjoy the video and if you want to see more videos covering Baldur's Gate, Elder Scrolls and Starfield be sure to check out the channel. Otherwise let us begin. Ceridil, Cerod, the seat of sundered kings, the home of empires. Here, Saint Alessia would forge a nation, tempered in the fires of oppression that would remake the world, through steel, discipline, and faith in the divines. The Imperials, the true heirs of the dragon, would shine his light upon the world. His red legions would stand firm against his enemies, both in Oblivion and in Mundus. Through the ages, these stalwart people would unite mortal kind, through fire and blood, by his law, his will, and by the divines. And though in time, their light his light would be pushed back by the darkness from within mortal kind. These builders of empires might yet rise again. When the next Elder Scroll is written, you shall be its scribe. The shape of the future, the fate of the empire. These things now belong to you. The Aliads, the Heartland High Elves, the Wild Elves. The Aliads at their peak were as a mighty empire that ranged from Hammerfell to the Vallis Mountains and from the Geralds to Blackmarsh and Valinwood. Masters of alteration, creating great cities above and below ground, cities of light and magic. Yet behind a facade of culture, perfectionism expected of those descended from the Oldmer, there was a darkness, the corruption of the Daedra, from perfection to obsession, culture to overindulgence, and unparalleled cruelty that shamed the blood of the Aedra that flowed through their veins. Their once great empire that followed in the footsteps of Topol the pilot that conquered the Nedic peoples of the region had succumbed to hubris as the Nedic slave chosen by the dragon god and the Aedra would overthrow their empire and set in motion the rise of a human empire that would eventually humble even serene Alinor. Yet what happened? How did the various great city-states of the Aliads, their kings, their people, once considered the pinnacle of elven civilization on the mainland of Tamriel, how did it fall? And what happened to the now mythical people? The Rise of the Aliads To understand what happened, and the importance of the Aliads to the history of Tamriel, we must first explore the Rise of the Aliads and how they came to dominate central Tamriel and what their culture was like. During the Middle Merefic era, Topol the pilot, an old merry explorer and navigator, charted what we now call the Nibbane Basin, supposedly even finding birdmen. In subsequent years, elves from Alinor that would eventually become known as the Aliads or Wild Elves arrived in the region that Topol had once charted. Many of them were Daedric worshippers, seeking to escape the harsh Old Mary laws on the worship of Daedra. They supposedly conquered the Birdmen, and would build their first cities around a central feature of the White Gold Tower, on what we now call the Imperial Isle. They would call the tower the Temple of the Ten Ancestors, a symbol of the glory of the Aedra given form, that is, their divine ancestors. In time they would fight, conquer and then enslave the Needs who had lived in the region. From there they would expand and build cities as far as Blackmarsh, Valinwood and Hammerfell. 
they forged an elven empire in the heartlands of Tamriel, with the Great Tower itself at its heart. They were a powerful group of city-states ruled by many alien kings, though it must be remembered that they still paid tribute to the High King of Alanor, as custom demanded. Yet with the rise of a power comes stagnation, and the Aelids would suffer civil strife both in the late Merefic era and in the First Era that would weaken them. One such was the campaigns of King Calemeral Lightbringer, who would become known as the Undying, as he was a powerful necromancer turned Aelid Lich, who sought to rule all of Cyrodiil as its king and then beyond. In the end, he would have to be sealed away by his own brother, Valentius, and his allied rebel alien kings who fought against his dominion. Yet that was not the only civil strife, for another, perhaps more important one, the Narfalcell Schism. Starting in the late Merefic era, it would be an on and off conflict of religion until the fall of the Aelids. It was a sign of the troubles that would come as the relations between the Aedric worshipping kings and the Daedric ones broke down time and time again, leading to bloodshed and paving the way for the rise of the new power in Sirod. The Fall of the Aelids All rises are preceded by a fall, and the Aelids were no different, for during the first era, as humanity across the continent was growing in power, the Age of Myrrh dominance was coming to an end, just as the Merefic Era had already been declared as having made way for the First Era. That era would see the rise of the Bretons, as the Rennie dominion over High Rock slipped, and they were forced to coexist with the new Breton-ruled kingdoms. The glorified genetic experiment of the Dereni Altmer had created their downfall, yet it was not a brutal one, and they were able to coexist in some form. Unlike in Merith, where the Atmorans, having been attacked by the Falmer, the Snow Elves, would return to the mainland with a terrible vengeance, as the human kingdom of Skyrim would cast aside the once proud Falmer, and in Hammerfell, a new breed of warrior was born human warriors that would sweep across men and mirror alike in the red wave that was the Regada, making way for the new nation of Hammerfell. North and west, elven power had diminished, and the old alien colonies and cities on the border regions were under threat, yet the aliens confident in their arrogance, their great cities glistening like starlight, and the mighty Daedra and their armies of oblivion at their command, not heeding the lessons of the Narfal Cell Schism. They saw no threat from without, yet the greatest threat to the Aelids would always come from within. An Edic woman, a slave, a devoted follower of the Aedra, Alessia, Akatosh's chosen, would rally slave and Aedric worshipping Aelids alike with the support from their Nordic allies and the likes of Morahouse, the Breath of Kine, and Shore's avatar, Pelino Whitestreak. They would topple the greatest of the alien cities that had once put their faith in the Daedra, for Akatosh had seen enough. In the covenant with the dragonborn Alessia, Oblivion was shut out of Mundus and the Daedric armies that might have saved the most despicable of the alien princes and kings from their fate could not come to their aid. One by one, the alien cities that resisted fell within Cyrodiil, and only the alien allies of Alessia, those who venerated the Aedra, were allowed to coexist. With its first empress crown, and the founding of the first empire, it was not the end of the Aelids, for their sudden fall from dominance was preceded by a steady decline. The Aelids still ruled as vassals of the new empress. The Aelid cities and Blackmarsh and the border regions continued to exist. What happened? The Alessian Order happened. With St. Alessia's passing and the subsequent weak leadership of her heirs, they would effectively cede control of the administration of the Empire to the theocratic elite in that of the Alessian Order. The Order would not be content to coexist with the Elves. Now a gradual purging of Elves and non-believers alike began, and it would last for centuries. The true fall of the once great people had begun. 
Yet, it was during this era that the remnants of the Aliads in Black Marsh, the Barsabic Aliads, which had originally been forced out of Cerrado by their Daedric worshipping kin, in the last battle of the long-running conflict known as the Narfensel Schism, the battle was known as the Scouring of Wendelbeck. It would be followed by the rise of the Alessians, to which the Barsabic would not intervene, and in time many Aliads would flee to the protection of this Aliad subculture, for they did not trust the Alessians, even if they did worship the Aedra. For they were the children of the hated Kine, her name derogatory and cursed among the elves. These people would seemingly persevere for a time, despite some skirmishes with the Alessians. Yet their own decline, likely due to their harsh treatment of the native Argonians of the region, is a likely cause, as the natives came to revile them and fear them with the great temple of Loriacel that was meant to be an homage to the temple of the ten ancestors in Cyrodo, it was seen as a symbol of Barsabic tyranny among the children of the Hist and would become a target. Though lost to history, their echo can still be found in the second era as the Fen Lords, alien necromancers, liches, had survived the years and would still terrorise the region and were a testament to how far the Aliads had fallen. Yet not all the Aliad remnants were willing to fall into obscurity. The Last King of the Aliads With their steady decline, the Aliads would try to regroup, and though they could not hope to restore their once great cities, they could at least see the demise of the Alessians that brought them so much misery or at the very least set the stage for it in the years to come. The most well known of these Aeliad remnants was Lalorian Dinar, the ruler in dark times, the so-called last king of the Aeliads. Yet his role in Tamriel's history would go beyond simply resisting the great human power of the first era, for he had a great role to play. Hailing from the great Aeliad city of Ninalata, he would lead the remnants of the once great city to resist the Alessian order. Having been driven westward, he would found the city of Bisnensel. Later, he joined forces with the elves and the Breton warriors of House Dreni of High Rock, who would fight an Alessian incursion, and the last king of the Aeliads would take part in the notable battle of Glenumbria Moors, with the Dreni clan claiming victory helping to stem the tide of the Alessians and their westward push. A devoted servant of the Goddess of Light, Mered Nunda, or Meridia, in time he would try to return to his homeland, only to be captured by Molag Baal, one of the great enemies of the Lady of Light. He would be tortured, and would witness around him the images of the once great White Tower that had been so important to his people, forming what would be his torture chamber. Yet it was not the end for the last king, for his patron had one last task for him. Freed by the hero of prophecy, he would once again take up arms at the behest of his goddess, not for Aeliad Kine alone, but for all mortal kind in Mundus, as he would fight to end Molag Baal's plane meld, and he would be fortunate enough to behold the splendour of the Lady of Light as she fought Molag Baal. Yet in this final hour of his fight against the darkness, the last light of the Aeliads would be extinguished, as the ruler in dark times would help to bolster the light of mortal kind as the plain meld ended, the last great act of a dying people, and their last king gone, and with him so ended the story of the Aeliads. My time has finally come, it seems. I have... I have lived far longer than any of my people. Finally, I will... I will be able to join them once more. Then I shall... I shall rest well, knowing my final day, the final day of the alien people, was spent saving Nern from the clutches of Molag Baal. May the spirits guide me on my... 
And so the Aelids fell. Another elven people that had once dominated a part of Tamriel, their power upended by the rise of humanity. Yet the question becomes, what was their legacy, and was the last king truly the last Aelid? Let me know your thoughts on this, and tell me what you think of the Aelids in the comments, I would love to hear your thoughts. And remember, the question of the day is, which race or races would you like to see playable in Elder Scrolls 6, and why? It can be any race, alive or dead. I will give my own thoughts in the final section for those interested. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe and comment if you enjoyed this video and please stay safe, have a great day and thanks for watching. Question of the day. So which race or races would I like to see made playable in Elder Scrolls 6? My first choice would be Reachmen without doubt. Currently I have to pretend to be one as a Breton, but if you know the lore you know those Nords confusing the two are idiots frankly, and the two peoples are very distinct. The reason is simple, I'm Scottish, and the closest thing to my own people in Elder Scrolls are the Reachmen. I will admit I do have some Norman heritage so I'm okay with Bretons as well. Anyway, they're clearly meant to be Celtic, and their conception of monarchy especially is similar to the King of Scots concept, while their voice direction in ESO Markarth was pleasing to me as it was all Irish and Scottish accents. That is, the Reachmen are clearly meant to be somewhere between Irish and Scottish Celts. That aside, I do love their more neutral take on religion and the fact that they can balance all sorts of deities and customs makes for some great roleplay opportunities. Plus Reachmen do not kneel, and I'll be damned if I let the Nord occupation continue. The runner up would be between two others, with what I think many viewers will say as well, that being the Dwemer, because they're the Dwemer enough said, and also Akka or some form of Akaviri people. Seriously, Bethesda, give us more cool Asian fantasy medieval elements in Elder Scrolls. It's literally sitting there right on the table, just take it. Just flesh out the Eastern Continent's lore and make one of the races of that continent playable. Anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for sticking around if you've listened to my little tangent here. Make sure to tell me what your race choice would be for Elder Scrolls 6. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. Otherwise, please enjoy your day and thanks again for watching.